thoughts on this upcoming fight and same as Bernard, you still look like you're in great shape. Any thoughts about coming back into the ring besides being outside working for Sky? Bernard Hopkins, Carl Frush on the same stage, where is it? Is this the ring? No, we're both retired, we're both done. Um, so, you want to know, there he is. <laughs> Yeah, good to see you. So, what do you want to know? Give me the glove, Kim Kel Brook. You want to know about that? It's a fascinating fight. It's a fascinating matchup. And the reason I say fascinating is because in Kel Brook we've got somebody who's unbeaten and is obviously very, very ambitious. But at World to Wait, he's got that speed. He's very, very talented. I can say that firsthand. I've sparred with him uh, before the Andre Durrell fight, which was the first fight of the Super Six. And I couldn't quite get near him. I couldn't quite tag him. I had to. I had to use my weight advantage and lean on him and push him back and, and bully him just to sort of get some sort of work off because his counter right hand, his fast jab, his slight head movement, he's not got the typical Ingle style, the, the Johnny Nelson, the Nassim Hamid style. He's not, not, not got that elusive, sort of cocky, nonchalant, arrogant style if you like, but he's, he's got the basic fundamental skills of the Ingle camp, but that with a polished defence. So he's, he's got great defence, great timing, and great speed, but this is all at welterweight. He's now a middleweight, so you know we don't know what he's going to bring as a middleweight. Is he still going to have the speed? Hopefully, is he going to be able to punch harder? Probably because he's got more skill, he's got more muscle, more bump, more power. Um, but how will he? How will he cope with somebody like Gennady Golovkin? Um, it's it's a tough, tough task. Let's be honest. Let's be totally honest. But Kel Brook. Has definitely got the talent, he's got the movement, he's got the speed. It's, it's just exciting thinking about how it's going to unfold. I think he needs to use his jab, use his range, use his counter right hand, use his, use his movement a lot early on. Um, but there's going to be times when we're going to have to stand and fight. And when he does, that's when we're going to find out, find out what happens and how he copes with taking the shots off um, getting the Golovkin. And it's not just the head shots that, that any boxer has to worry about, it's also the body shots. And when you're getting hit to the body by people who are stronger than you, then you feel it and you know about it. And then later on down the stretch, when their body shots are still soaking in and have drained your tank empty, that's when, that's when it can be the, um, the rhyme on the wall for you, it can be curtains. But uh, Dominic Ingall, very, very experienced um, trainer. He's trained, I mentioned Nassim Hamid earlier, Johnny Nelson, Ryan Rhodes, right back to as old as you want in the, in the Winker Bank gym. Um, Errol Bomber Graham, I mean, one of the best fighters that never won a world title, was from the same gym. And he knows what he's doing, Dominic Ingle. He, he will have his tactics, he'll have his plan A and plan B and plan C. And he gets fighters through fights that you won't believe he could do, even, even down on the, on the undercard and on the journeyman sort of level. And the, the younger fighters, I'm not going to mention any names because these lads don't like to be called journeymen, but the lads that are sometimes there to make the numbers up, they, they hear the final bell and they get through the fight because they've got Dominic Ingle in the corner. Um, Kel Brook has got a massive chance to really, really shock the world. Will he do it? Nobody knows. Come on. But we're all looking forward to it. We're all excited about finding out, Michael. And I'm sure you are too, because you're also a big boxing fan. So roll on tomorrow because um, I'm already nervous. I'm already full of adrenaline. Let me ask you this. The, the important thing here is we have a fighter who's been fighting as a welterweight moving up and you know today we say two divisions when uh the old timers will say well you know the, those in between divisions they don't mean much but it, he's moving up from 47 to 60 and you know you've known him for years and you've seen him at weigh-ins at, at 147 and he he would actually look like he needs to be rushed to the hospital and needs an iv in other words he really would struggle to come in at 147. do you think now uh, with, with you know with a great training team and everything and he's actually more relaxed and really able to train and come in at a more natural fighting weight that this should be you know, just feel much better to him at weighing in at this 160 pound weight I think so yes I think a lot of fighters I mean Bernard Hopkins has been on stage myself we didn't really struggle at the weight that much and Floyd Mayweather another prime example all the, all the top fighters don't seem to really struggle at weight, but most fighters do. They take weight off 
and you said they've got that look about them where they need to be rushed to the hospital when on the scales. They've got that gaunt, drained, they're like a boiled chicken. They just don't look healthy at all. And then Kel Brook, when I look at pictures of him now at 147 and look at him now, he looks ill at 147. So I think you're right. I think he's now at a weight where he's comfortable, he's more natural. Um, but we've just not seen him. We've just not seen him at middleweight. Obviously, people have seen him in the gym. I've sparred with him when he's been heavier. Um, so it's the element of the unknown again. We just don't know. But what we do know is, to answer your question, he will be more com confident, he'll be more comfortable. He'll be full of energy down the stretch through the whole fight. So his work output, his work rate should be a lot higher. He should be punching harder. And hopefully, hopefully, he'll still keep his speed because th that's going to be significant in this, the speed. If you can get the the fast hands going and get a movement going and sustain it for 12 rounds and we've got to say it would be an upset there could be a massive upset here and Gennady Golovkin could fall to Kel Brook oh. <laughs> That's good to hear and you'll be at ringside for Sky Sports box office with uh, your crew so we're looking forward to it ladies and gentlemen another future boxing hall of famer the Cobra Carl Frosch